ladies and gentlemen, the following contains spoilers about Batman vs Superman. If you want to avoid said spoilers, then don't watch this. But if you've seen the film and you don't care about things being spoiled, then go ahead and watch this. Joining me are Matt the Pro Britons. Good evening. The Honey Vegetarian Neil. Hi. The Dad, Superman Killing Knight, Braden Ahern. Hello. And me, your host, Red Thunder, Adam Gerard. And gentlemen, let's talk Batman versus Superman. I'm a kid! That's all I can say, really. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks for that. It was fun. No, come on. What do you got? Uh, it's hard for, for those of you wondering, we've literally all seen it within the last 48 hours, some of us more than once. Um, it's a hard film to talk about because, so I'm, I've seen it twice, and what I've realised about it, it's a hard film to talk about because the only place you can start is at the end and work your way backwards, because ultimately yeah. this mm-hmm. is a film based on its ending yeah. more than anything. Yeah. So, once again, if you do not want spoilers... spoilers. Turn up now. Okay. Ultimately, this film is getting panned by the critics at the moment Mm -hmm. because, in my opinion, they want a happy cookie-cutter Marvel ending, and this is a DC film with Mm. real-life consequences, real-life situations, Mm -hmm. and let's face it, the biggest one happens in that Superman dies. Yeah. Now, they'll bring him back like in the comics, sure. Yeah, But if you live in a world where God can fall... Yeah. That's that. That's a gritty. What? So these guys aren't making jokes because at any moment they could die. Yeah. yeah. They are what the 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 TV DC universe keeps pretending it's doing with that whole. Oliver's like, this isn't a joke, Barry. Yeah. This is. This isn't a joke, yeah. Barry. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One hundred ten percent. Um. So now that we've got, we've got the cat out of the bag, we've got the yeah. we've got the weight off of us that that's that this film leads to a death, and we can talk about it getting there. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the film itself, but let's also. Let's talk about one thing first and foremost. Let's get it off our chests. Mm. Why is the Flash a bag lady? Why is he collecting <laughs> cans with his trolley down the street? Oh, uh, it's just horrid looking. He, he could be an ex-milkman too. It was annoying. It's it was pretty just, annoying. He was only there for like 15 to 20 seconds and it was just... It was... There was the one part where he popped into the cave and, and saw Bruce and yeah, said, Bruce I'm too early. Dream. But, and, however, did you notice when Bruce came back to reality, the papers were all still... Yeah, still flying and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, that part I can see being necessary because this is the beginning of the Justice League and obviously leads somewhere and the Flash has the ability to port through time. Yep. But the other thing, seeing... Well, he was too early. He well. was too early. I mean, maybe that's a problem that he could probably you know, <laughs> speak pre- to someone about. He's a pre-butter. He's a pre-butter. He's a premature butter. Um, you know, I understand why that was there. He looked horrid. The armor looked oh. terrible. Uh, the special yeah, we, effects uh, were, were fantastic. No, no. Sorry? I didn't understand the armor. Uh, the armor, uh, the only the only logic I can put behind him wearing armor is twofold. Either they're on Apocalypse fighting uh, Darkseid, Dark or it's something he needs to get up to the speed fast enough to travel through time. Yeah. Yeah, I thought something maybe like that. It's one, it's one of those two. Yeah. Just furthermore, his ordinary Flash mask looked disgusting. Yeah, it looked pretty gross. Just the, I actually the, I, thought for the first few seconds I saw it that it was uh, Red Robin. Yeah. 
back from the past or back like in, a, in from the dead like mm. speaking to him from beyond the grave yeah, sort of thing that's, yeah because it looked like a domino mask not a yeah like an actual cow like a proper cow yeah um yeah. one thing i don't understand is the security fo- footage um he grows a worse beard than you too by the way yeah yeah the security fo- footage we saw right with with the milk and stopping the perp- that's cool that's very flash if he knew he was going to do this scene why not attempt to look like barry allen because it's like he, Cut he, your hand. this is his this is this is the new wave way you look, man. Like when you when you're the Flash, like Grant Gustin is the Flash and he's the Flash and we're all the Flash and because because the Flash can be any one of us, we're all the Flash. Therefore, he's making himself look like both men and women to appeal to all audiences. No, I I know you're just doing. Okay, I know you're doing that thing you do. No. Every day I'm doing that thing he's, I do. And, what, you know, what he, I know you just can't take it when I do that thing I do. Yeah. It's, what he's done is it's his that um, thing I do. I think he does, but he's only in the movie for a couple of seconds, and most of that time he's wearing a cow, so he's like, I'm not going to cut my hair yet, because they haven't asked me to. Christopher Pine was in the movie in a photo, and he looks, like, accurate. I know, but this is Ezra Miller we are talking about, the guy that does not give a fuck about being Flash. Mm, that's true. No, he does, because he wants to do it for the next 50 or so years. Yeah, which he wants. No, he cares about the paycheck. <sighs> what? what? Brain. Implying an actor why, would do something for money. Why do you have to be so cynical, man? Like, man, George Clooney did it for the, for the art and the craft and the nipples. And, George and, Clooney did it for the rock. He did it for the people. He did it for the rock. He does Kevin, it for the Kevin people. Kevin Costner did it for the two hours and 45 minutes. Oh, Kevin Costner does it for the runtime, man. I'm he does sure it. that's why he was in this film. Because <laughs> yeah. he was like, how long does it run? Four You're trying hours. to make this without me? Exactly. Without me? How dare you, sir? Um, yeah, no, Ezra Miller seems very out of place, even just with the armour, with full CG, he still seems very out of place. I would like to reserve judgment until 2017 when his movie comes out, but I'm not. Right, well, just, but just, I won't. Just interject. I guess to interject there, yeah. we can judge him and what we're seeing based on the fact we've got two cameos of him. Mm-hmm. One in costume, one out. Yeah. And in that time, we also got a cameo of Aquaman and a cameo of Cyborg. The cyborg one, to was, me, was yeah. the best of them all. Oh, absolutely, hundred. Yeah, the Aquaman one cool. was the most like not. To the, I, I expected him to wink at the fucking camera before he took it out. Yeah, I really did because he, he came out. I was just expecting a smile or something, and then I realised this is the DCU where shit, shit matters, so they don't really smile because yeah. yeah. heroes aren't heroes because it's fun. Heroes are heroes because without us, the world would fucking burn. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I love the cyborg one of like the dad doing everything he can, and, uh, yeah. so, and the uh, fact Silas, that it's the, the dude from Terminator Two is that yeah. nice, that's that perfect comic book yeah. touch where you're like, yeah. that's very nice and very clever, but I'm not mad at you for having done that. Yeah, yeah. no, I, he he was very familiar. I'm like, where, which Terminator is he from? And as soon as he said T Two, I'm like, yes, it is. It's the guy from the Terminator. Hand. Yeah, he had the hand. So and no, like, it actually fits. <laughs> yeah, Miles Dyson. Miles, Miles, Miles Dyson. Dyson. Miles, not a little wow. cool Matt knows his product. Let's just <laughs> let that sink in. So that's two. That's two black actors he knows. Awesome. No, that that was the name of the character in. The oh, movie. the character that LL Cool J played, played in yeah. Terminator Two. Right. Okay. Affirmative action. <laughs> just stop. Just, just stop. Yeah, no. You need this job. I need this job. I know. All right. Well, let, let let's go over to Mo. Let's throw it to Mo. Brayden, what did you think of Batman vs Superman? Well, I'm just I'm going to go right sort of from the start here. Um, it's always a good place to start. Spoiler alert. Yep, yep. The following start contains the spoilers. spoilers. They jumped straight into, uh, I guess, a flashback of Man of Steel, but showing it from the other side and down on the ground where Bruce Wayne was yep. um, and, and running through the city and things like that. And you can just sit that set the tone for the movie straight away. How fucking yeah, dark it was like people were dying. Yeah. Because of this. But fight. Also, that's like, the most right Bruce Wayne we've ever, we've ever, like, that most Batman we've ever seen. Cause Christian Bale's Batman wouldn't have run into that. He would have looked at it and been all like, let me just, we need to go there. I need, yeah. Well, it's not night time, and Jim hasn't sent up the signal, so... I haven't got enough gas to make Where's Rachel? Him. Alfred, where's Rachel? Um, is Where the, the other begin- truck? Has the lamb again, got petrol And out. Alfred would feel like, I just want you to go to Paris, Master Bruce. You've not been 20 years of Batman. This is Fox. <laughs> Sorry, Brayden, continue. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that just... That really set 
the tone of the movie for me and, and yep. seeing um, like the little girl, he saved the little girl and he's like, where's your mom? And she points oh. up to the building that's just been torn to shreds by Batman and uh, Superman and Zod. And the look in his eyes as well. Uh, he was angry. angry. Where he's like, I'm going to kill yeah, this he, guy. He, yeah. Like an angry I'm going to skull that, um, and just yeah, jumping straight into that right at the start just had me like, holy shit, this is, yeah. this movie is going to be fucking heavy. Mm. Um, it's pretty intense. It yeah, is, oh, it is very. It's intense. gritty. It is very there intense. Was, there was there was parts of this movie I, that felt almost difficult to watch because you're just like, mm-hmm. what? Mm. I think yeah. that, that's a critic's problem as well. Is that it? it it's it, Marvel's easy. You sit sitting here, can eat your popcorn. Yeah. Oh, oh, they're all friends in the air with hugs. Oh, this way, talk, halfway uh, through, you're like, fuck. A talking hell. raccoon and a talking tree. How wacky and zany. Here, yeah, exactly. it's, it's it's for grown up. You have to put your big boy pants on. Mm. You have to put mm. your big boy pants on. See, the one no, this thing... is not for kids. DC <clears throat> and Warner Brothers are making these not for kids. Yeah. See, the part that yeah. stuck out for me, which I was actually quite surprised. Every Batman movie, we constantly see the death of Martha and Thomas Wayne. The way this one was shot what was was very simple. Uh, but I mean, even down the the way the pearl, ne- that pearl necklace breaks, fucking was yeah. unreal in yeah. my opinion. I saw you, that. You got shot in the fucking face. Yeah, she yeah. got shot in the face. But the way that those pearls get yeah. broken on the the I hammer. Think she about here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, still, it's I'm probably not up an angle. There was though, there was yeah. another moment. Um, Who would have lifted it? There was there was a mo- another moment in the movie where I actually went fuck. Mm. Why that? Pray out loud. And Adam was like two or three seats down from me and he heard me. Mm, and I didn't realise until like we're talking about it later on. Mm. Uh, was in the uh, in the Senate when the mm. bomb went off. Oh, yeah. 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 Jeez. Yeah. Like, did not see that coming. And that just literally made me go, fuck. Yeah. And like. Yeah. Um, With Superman just standing there in the middle of it all just going, God damn it. Just, yeah. just blow. Oh, he looks yeah. like he's about to cry. Yeah. 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 But sorry, sorry, Brad, back to you, back to you, back to your points. Um, yeah, I was just saying how how dark that sort of that that first scene set set the tone, the tone for the movie, and where yeah. it went from there. Um, I did, I've been watch, I've been reading a lot of reviews and watching a lot of things on YouTube and well, hearing a lot that. of different opinions and things like that. And there was one saying that, um, and this was this was actually I watched this on Fat Man on Batman uh, with Kevin Smith absent because he's in Canada directing the flash right now and um his opinions i would actually care to hear mm. but sorry brain go ahead. Hey, what, sorry? i see his opinions would be ones i would care to hear on this i would that that i would actually take whatever he said and be like okay because he loves yeah. this character so if he walks away from oh, this God, film yeah. going this was a turd for xyz reasons i would take his points on board oh, i might not agree but i would take them on board and yeah, be like you sir have a valid opinion to be able to make this yeah, yeah. But sorry Braden, continue you were listening to batman and batman the, the guy who co-hosted with kevin smith mark someone i can't remember his name he um he said that he was expecting this movie to be a steaming pile of shit and he fucking loved it but wow. one of the big problems he said he saw with it was because it was so dark we're now going to get an equally dark aquaman an equally dark wonder woman an equally dark flash Aquaman so is the so one forth. I don't see being dark. Mm. Or as dark. Aquaman. Yeah, Aquaman I see being more along the lines of Thor. Because Thor is the dark... Like, theoretically, the Thor films, in his medieval shit that's taken place, are the, the heaviest and grittiest of Marvels. Mm. And I reckon that's where you'll get from Aquaman, mm. is that he will, he'll be a bit more Thor-like and probably have... There'll be something within that that will be a bit more light-hearted, even if it's just somebody... Yeah, but Wonder yeah. Woman will see, be see, Wonder I, Woman will be dark because Wonder Woman's will be a hundred years. The hundred years she's talking oh, about playing yeah. mankind. But sorry, Brian, go ahead. I, I actually think that this is probably the darkest of the movies we're going to get in the DC universe. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, so, I think. I mean, you look at the dark. end. Spoilers. You look at the end where um, Batman goes into the prison where Lex Luthor is, and he has no. his little branding iron. Yeah. yeah. And doesn't doesn't use it on him. I think. Superman has changed Batman as a person, <clears throat> um, oh, and see. we will yeah. see a bit of a, a bit of a lighter Batman and a bit of a lighter su- lighter Superman. They've sort of. Um, I did. I actually did notice, and I, did you pick up this? I said this to Terry afterwards. Mm. When Superman died, they took the gritty filter off the camera. Everything yeah. had color again, and was clear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I noticed that, and I was like, "Wow, something." Mm-hmm. Like something changed for the better in the world here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. did like the fact Batman at the end is right. like, we need to get all the other metahumans together because something's coming. Mm. Mm. 
-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. So I do think that this is going to be the darkest of the DC films we are going to see. I I will go... And then, I will only I can argue that with one. There will be one darker, and that is when the Flash dies. Yeah. Yeah. They will do the crisis. I was having a conversation with my brother oh. about where, where, do, where the films go from here in terms of a bigger picture scenario. I'm personally of the belief that most of the solo films will be prequels, in that we'll see what everybody yeah, was they... doing in the lead-up to everything. Um, but the Justice League films, I actually think, will go... Because initially I didn't think they'd throw Darkseid in right off the bat. Or Darkseid, mm. I should say, sorry. But then I realised, no, that makes sense. You go, you throw him up a big adversary first with Darkseid and all shit goes down and, and there's all this crap going on because that is a bit, that's what you're used to seeing out of a comic book is a big villain. So mm. you get that out of the way so then you can have the metaphysical crisis where shit is just getting ripped apart from everywhere and you've had then yeah. time to introduce all mm. these other things, mm. and also then you've had the Flash solo film, so you've had Flash two or three times, because I think they're all going to cameo in each other's films. Mm. So you've had these characters two or three times, Flash maybe even four times. So even if we don't like Ezra, we'll have some sort of attachment, or audiences who don't mind Ezra will have an attachment so when he dies, mm. he twists that much more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because mm. Flash has always been sort of almost like the human heart of the whole... Flash is the most light-hearted of them yeah. He's the jokester. Yeah, he tries to keep everything light hard, like he's, everything's going to be okay. He's the antithesis of Batman, who's just there like, can you stop? Yeah, can you stop? It's not a joke in matter. Like, life and yeah. death isn't a joke in matter. So. Absolutely. And isn't Batman, in one of the quote, quote, uh, comics, doesn't he quote saying, Barry Allen, Allen is the type of man I wish I was my parents didn't die? I think that's a quote from a comic book somewhere. No, I think it's from um, the movie thing. What would be the paradox? Oh, that's right, it's from the Paradox, isn't it? That's right. So, yeah, so that's that's the thing with Barry Allen. You're meant to get so attached to this guy. But once yep. he eventually does, you know, disintegrate, you feel like your heart's been ripped out. So, yep. mm -hmm. which it's going to be kind of hard with Ezra Miller playing the role, but yeah, we'll jump off that cliff when we But we'll be able to rejoice at the fact that Wally West will turn up. Yes. One thing I, I am impressed with with this film was, was music. They nailed yeah. the music. Um, Wonder Woman's oh, yeah. theme in particular is the best. Mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer. Wonder Woman's theme. For, for those of you at home, I'll play, I'll play the, uh, the 15 or so seconds I'm allowed to play without getting sued, YouTube. Just <coughs> pump your brakes. Find this. It's ridiculous. That is just... I'm hard like, It's ridiculous. When, when Batman first finds that photo of her on, on his... On the fucking picture-perfect bat computer with the fucking chair from the comics... <laughs> yeah. Um, when he finds that picture and that first click kicks in as he's scrolling through and it's like 1918, yeah. I'm just like, okay, you just sold me on the Wonder Woman movie. Like, sh you shut up and take my money. Yeah. If that's the fucking theme, yeah. that must be a yeah. kick-ass movie. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be one of the best period pieces that we'll ever see. And by period, I mean... It's going to, it's going to be up there with, with uh, First Avenger. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, no, I'm, also, I'm, of the, sorry, sorry, I'm also of the belief that the Batman film will be will be set half in the past, half in the modern. Yeah. In that we will understand in Batman's film why he has Robin's suit in that case. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. There was a lot of, there was oh, yeah, a lot yeah. of Easter eggs in there that we kind of got. Yeah. But you need clarification on, so you'd have oh, to. Yeah. You'd have to. Their interpretation. Of oh, absolutely. Those. Like uh, the Robin suit. Like me and Adam had a discussion. If it's yeah. like, is it Tim Drake because of the staff, or is it Jason Todd because that's the one he feels the most loss over, sort yeah, of thing. That's right. If they combine the two, which they probably did. So yeah, there's a lot of different stuff in there. Like, where's the Joker at the moment for that two, three weeks? Is he locked up? I think up? he's in Arkham. I think the suicide because because so. the Suicide Squad. Oh. From what I gather, the Suicide Squad film looks like it's going to be very similar to Assault on Arkham. Just go watch Assault on Arkham. I don't think it's going to be the same storyline. I think it's going to be similar. And so in the Assault on Arkham, the Joker... Yeah, yeah he's already in there. He's in there and gets busted out by mm -hmm. accident during it, and that's why yeah. Batman is there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Ben Affleck. Again, it's Batman, because Ben Affleck is Batman. Yeah, that, I didn't see Ben Affleck. Oh, I saw he's the, Batman. I saw 1990s animated Batman. 
Yeah. There's I only real, and there's only real two parts in the movie where he's actually like the mask of Bruce Wayne is when he's pretending to be drunk in the server room, yep. and then when he wakes up with a random chick in his bed. Yeah. That's it. That's about as much Bruce Wayne as you get. The rest is just bad. Yeah, well, that, but the problem with a life like that is that uh, is that there will there will probably be no wine in the cellar for the future generations to inherit. That's if, if there, there is uh, future generations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy Irons was a really Tell interesting. Like <laughs> Jeremy Irons is possibly the was a very left field pick as Alfred because I keep thinking it's like the man of the dryness. Earth. But he, yeah, because he's so he's aged he's, very I did well not and he's mean very to dry. Eavesdrop, sir. Yeah, yeah, he's aged very well and he plays. I love a the part Alfred. where he's like. Um, since the age of seven, the art of deception has taken you like Mozart to a harpsichord. However, you have never been able to lie to me, Master Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so fucking, like, cranky throughout the entire yeah, film. Yeah, he's just great. pissed off. He's cranky just pissed off, him. yeah. No, ben Jack... Affleck looked so tired. Yeah, he looks... Yeah. Like what you would imagine, oh, 20 years of being Batman with duty, he looked wrecked. Yeah, he was done. But, mm-hmm. I... That man, mm. Henry Cavill, in the last film, was one of the biggest human beings I've ever seen, and I watch wrestling. Yeah. Ben Affleck is ridiculous. He's bigger. He's ridiculous. His shoulders on that man when he was walking the around. The fucking back! Suit. But just, just his shoulders. He's walking around in the suit, and you just see the back shot of him, you're like, holy yeah. fuck, where's yeah. his neck? Yeah, yeah. All yeah. I can see is head and shoulders. That's it. He's just a beast. Yeah, that training montage is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Oh, and it looks God. like it's not... Like him just doing it for two I, seconds I, I, in the I, I, Yeah, I think he dragged a tyre on a very heavy rope yeah. and things like that. Like, Because his scream that he let out afterwards is that post. Yeah, I want I mean, we live, in a, we live in a world where uh, The Rock making Hercules ch- was chained to a rock and because the, cause he was chained to rock. Yeah. So he had... He, he had to They force. were stronger than him and yeah. he was never going to break them. He was able to put his... Uh, they did one tape, only one, but he yeah. put his full might in and passed out. Yeah. The, the film actually has yeah him, him just slump, yeah. and it is it's it's the rock point he pulls himself so hard that his body literally just goes Ugh. mm-hmm yep and that's what's great about Ben Affleck he's taking this role so seriously yeah I think that's why he looks it. so sad in these interviews yeah time, absolutely he's like man I fucking killed myself <laughs> absolutely this. absolutely um that's that's the annoying but, thing yeah. as as I as I've said in private if anybody is taking the fall for this film it's it's Zack Snyder Zach, oh absolutely absolutely it felt very choppy. It's because, it's, it's because it's it's three, it's they, that, like he like he himself said, it was a three hour film that we got told to cut down to two thirty. Yeah. So because yeah. there's a sub storyline when Lois Lane turns up on Lex's roof and Lex is like, so I understand you know about my warehouse. She's like, yeah, I know everything you've been doing. It's like, well, we, I don't. Yeah. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah. It's like mm. they sort of assume like uh, when we were watching Back to the Future, how you got a high school student best friends with a disgraced nuclear physicist. Yeah. It's like, cool. Continue. No, it's, but at least we need to know that a little point. bit. At yeah. least that's the starting point where it's like, this is where it starts, don't yeah. ask questions. But yeah. this is like halfway through, it's yeah. like, she's been investigating that. Yeah, she's done nothing. She's found a bullet. She just gets, she's, all she's done by this point is have a bath. Yeah. yeah. And, and get saved by yeah. Superman. Yeah. In other order. There's, um, I know we don't like uh, Mr. Genocide loving... Oh, Jesse Eisenberg has Lex Luthor. No. He was a no. good, he's a good villain, but the, it's not Le- the Lex. The script, the script had anybody else played Lex Luthor was perfect Lex. Yeah. Mm. The threats and everything were so fucking perfectly Lex Luthor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian was... Cranston, uh, fuck, I don't know, Vincent Dino. Vincent Brian Cranston, Lex Luthor. What's that? Give me fucking Brian Cranston, Lex Luthor. I'm worked up over this fucking clunge. Yeah. Oh, it just oh, irritates the shit out of me. Through Wait a second. Movie. Hold, Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Red alert. The lights. I'm sorry, but but Lex Luthor. Hang on, I'll do my. Yeah. Lex Luthor is supposed to be, you know, big, strong, fucking dark, serious. Um. I mean, yeah, he was smart in this movie and everything like that, but this guy was just a little twiggy clown, and it just irritated the fucking shit out of me. Every time he talked, I was just like, would you just shut the fuck up and get off the screen? You're pissing me off. I just... <laughs> absolute worst thing part about this movie was fucking Jesse Eisenberg. Roll him up. 
<laughs> like, you're not wrong, Brayden. You're not wrong there at all. Nice. Uh, Even down to the sneakers with the suit as you're walking into the crash site. I'm like, I why? I like... They wanted to make him a fucking millennial. The other thing as well, right, there are certain shots in this film that feel like there's 15 seconds missing before it. Like when mm. Batman broke in to steal the rock. I know earlier he said, I'm going to break in, I'm going to steal Lex's rock. Mm. Right? But then later on when Lex turns up, it makes no sense why there are bullets and shit there. Obviously until you get there, mm. the yeah. bat symbol. But at the same time, it's still like, why could we have had 15 seconds beforehand of Lex Luthor being like, what do you mean the rock's gone? Or what do you mean my lab's been broken into? Yeah. So yeah. we had con- Because there's no context of where he is. Yeah, because we go from the explosion in the... Uh... Yeah, the yeah. explosion in the, the amphitheater thing yeah. Yeah. to him walking through bullets and shit, and it's like, like okay. Why? Yeah. It's the same way that uh, apparently the, the extended cut, which comes out to actually three months' time on, on Blu ray, surprisingly, the mm. quickest turnaround I've ever seen. The extended cut is 30 minutes longer and actually does contain the. Se- At the council at the beginning, that, that woman from Africa is talking about how they heard the boom in the sky and then Superman, like the village was all destroyed, but we see none of that. Mm. We just see Superman take a dude out, and it's like, yeah. That scene is apparently longer, with Superman doing something. Mm. Yeah. That's what's in the longer cut. Yeah. Along with, apparently, that he has said there's a lot more there's blood and there's violence. Apparently, there's a few shots of Doomsday that were deemed too much. Yeah. yeah so, right. I imagine that's got something to do with the bones, and yeah. I, reckon the, I reckon when he punches through Superman, there'll be blood now. Yeah. Because yeah. I was really surprised mm. by the fact Superman and Batman took it to each other, mm-hmm. and Batman didn't even bleed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that annoyed me. Especially for a film where Batman says, you will bleed, and he punches him to fucking shit. Mm. I, I still believe that there is a point in there where there is a little bit of blood under... It doesn't really. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. still. You, you, you have to really notice it. It's We're not... talking about, like, you read, a, you yeah, read no, that in a comic I'm, book, I'm and they're probably like smashed that. to fuck. They look yeah. like that dude, the Punisher, shoots the face Yeah, I'm a bit surprised him. I didn't see any blood on uh, the, the bat suit. Oh, the cow. When when yeah, out, when, it, when he got ripped shattered. open, yeah. yeah. Like I say, all, all, I, all I wanted, and it would have been fine, was spit when Superman out. palmed him for him to have blood in the mouth and spit it out and then look at it and just be like, I'm, I'm going to crush you now. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Go, I'm going yeah. to fucking kill you. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. You alien scum. Um, <laughs> but there, there is a point, um, and I spoke to Adam about it, um, shortly after the film, um, there was a point where I, uh, I sort of went, holy fuck, that would have been a really good part of the movie if it wasn't Jesse Eisenberg. Mm. Is uh, when he started, when he was talking to the senator mm-hmm. right before the the hearing. Yeah. And he basically intimidated her, and then the scene afterwards. You need to be aware, senator. You're in the hot seat tonight. Yeah, that mm. one. And then mm. uh, you go. Which to the is the right way to deliver it, by the way. Sorry, mate. No, no, I was no, I was. Oh, I right. was shooting on Jesse Eisenberg. Okay, cool. Listen, Senator, uh, tonight you're you're in the you're in the hot seat tonight. Snoigan. Um. Did you, did you? Okay, side note here. That's how I hear Jesse Eisenberg talk now. Know, did you notice how much that dude's face twitched? It twitched yeah. more than a fucking rat. It does. It twitches a lot. Yeah, but that was that was meant to be him showing frustration and so getting annoyed pa- with people. But meant to be his eyebrows stayed the fucking same. It was like, because it's meant. What do you know? Do you know what it's meant to be? Do you know what he's trying to convey to you? He's trying to convey to you that he's the calm, cool sociopath with the calm exterior, but underneath it all is this seething brute just waiting to escape. That's what he's trying to put across. Because that's what Lex Luthor is in the comics. Like? A knob, a fucking preteen. Yeah, he's a millennial. Yeah. They've made Lex Luthor a millennial. Okay, he's a millennial. But, you can't but, tell but done seems, wrong. But, but who? Okay, that study that mm. we saw him in—that is the Lex Luthor we know. Mm. That is his study. So what the fuck happened to the Lex Luthor we know? Yeah. yeah. Like the the comic book Lex Luthor mm-hmm. must have existed to be this person's mm. progenitor. Yeah. So where the fuck? What the fuck? Where is that? Mm-hmm. That feels like something that was missing too. Is the backstory of Lex's dad because he's mm-hmm. like, I'm an orphan. Are you? Are you? Are you? Since when are you an orphan? Lex? Okay. All right, All right well. proceed. But anyway, if you say so, mate. <laughs> anyway. Oh, now I'm in prison. I better go bald. <laughs> and Quick, so, shave and my so head. And and his eyebrows. Because I'm in prison, this needs to happen. Because we all know when when you go to prison, they shave you bald. Anyway. Um, oh, then that's just when they're putting on the <laughs> fucking electric chair in 1924. <laughs> 
I'm done. Cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, going back to that, the scene before he says, you're in the hot seat now, Senator, and then they have the hearing, the whole point with her having the jar, the of, jar of piss, piss labelled Granny's Mash drink. Granny's oh, Peach. Uh, Granny's Ice Tea. Peach Tea. Peach Tea. There's Peach Tea. Granny's Peach Tea. There's Peach Tea. Um, and her, the, the senator's stuttering, and it didn't really make sense how much it affected her mm-hmm. um, until she turned around and it said, Granny's PC, and she's just like, fuck. Yeah, and he's not here. He, and, and then look at the chair, he's, he's not there, and you're like, holy fuck, and then the explosion goes yeah. off. Mm. And at that point, I just went... Speaking of the explosion, what's the point of introducing Lex's most known sidekick, Mercy Gray, to kill her immediately? Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay, so <laughs> the only thing that I don't really make sense of is Lex Luthor in this. Yeah. Like I said, if it had got to the end and he had dropped the whole mask and been like just like it's almost like, like the whole movie he was having a mental breakdown. Yeah, yeah. If, if by the end of it he'd been got, got on the really hard, cold, dead mm. stare where like when Batman turned up he had flinched and he just stared at him. Mm. Like, you'd be like, okay, now I see it. This was the beginning of Lex. This was mm. Lex's origin story. Yeah. But it's not even that, because, like, okay, what fucking, what incantation of Lex Luthor would go into that Kryptonian ship, and if it asked it, do you want to take control of this? I, I, do. I, I mean, I do. No, you, he would just walk yeah, in and yes, be like, I do. of course, I'm Lex fucking Luthor, and I'm Absolutely. going to kill Superman. Superman. The bells, the, the bells, the bells have told, ding come. dong, ding dong. I didn't understand that. Where is that from? It's not a poem, is it? No. It's just the, the funeral bells. Ah. Uh, funeral bells ring when somebody dies. Ah, fair enough. But, uh, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't understand why Lex Luthor was basically the Joker light. With a touch of... Oh, it felt to me, it felt, yeah. it felt to me like they had a script written right with the Joker and Lex working together. But then they went, no, nah, we don't want the Joker... Yeah, and gave all of Lex's too. lines to uh, all of his lines to Lex, so mm-hmm. Lex just read both, mm-hmm. and so he's just like mental. Yeah, he was just Scott Pilgrim fever dreaming through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So yeah, yeah, just Lex is just off. Yeah, it Way makes me off. it make it, it made me pray for like Lois and Clark Lex. Or even Kevin Spacey's Lex. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Spacey it's, was consistent. It says something when, like, Gene Hackman's one is a good Lex because he's a scumbag. Oh, yeah. But he's more intimidating than this Lex. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that, Mark like, Zuckert, Zuckert. in a world with this many... And, and, like, the problem is, one, Jesse Eisenberg, to me, feels like he's acting. He, like, he feels like he's making pretend to be something. Yeah. And yeah. He's just... He, he yeah. doesn't take jack shit seriously, but... As I say, this is a world with consequences, and Lex, the one person who suffers the most consequences, mm-hmm. just yeah, just goes. Blase. Doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's really blase. No. So I, I don't. I, 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 I actually I, don't see Jesse Eisenberg uh, getting a second film out of this. I hope not. I think Lex comes back, it, but oh, I don't think this is I like Rhodey. Yeah, it'll be like Rhodey. Or conversely, it'll have something to do with his dad. Yep. And his dad will be like, "Well, I'm." Um, you took Lex. my son. Yeah. I'm Lex Luthor. Yeah. Yep. Brian Cranston. Yeah. <gasps> I'm oh the man my God! Don't, don't 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 tease us like that, Brian. Now nah, Brian Cranston's gonna be kept for being Jim Gordon. Thing is, Zack Snyder has come out and said that Brian Cranston was in the running for this role. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably because Jesse Eisenberg was cheaper. Oh, well, they had to cut the budget I, somewhere, I, man. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a case of more than... Warner's had a has a like certain number of film deal with Jesse Eisenberg oh, because yeah. he start he did Social Network, which I'm pretty sure was Warner. Yep. Uh, now you see me. I don't know if that was Warner or not. What I'm, what I'm saying is they might like, for instance, mm. they'll sign you to five films. Oh yeah, like a five films. Edward Norton. Yeah. Edward Norton is a prime example, right? When he did yeah. Fight Club, mm. they signed him at the same time to do a second film. Yeah. The second film ended up being that they. So basically, we did we make this film for you. Mm-hmm. You make a film. We ask you to make a return. Ah, okay. And so he put everything he had in the Fight Club. Yeah. And then find it the fuck in in the Italian job. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe happened here is that it's like, well, okay, we. Your, your budget's getting out of hand, X, Y, Z. There's a mm-hmm. way to cost cut that. We have this deal with Eisenberg, because yep. we made Bing. Mm-hmm. He owes us, boom, put him in this. Yeah, and he just phoned in. Yeah. 
Which is a stupid everything. move, because... Like, he you doesn't get... understand how it works. Since he kills Comic-Con Genocide, he doesn't get how it works. He just, no, that's the thing. I mean, compar- comparatively to all the other... Like, The Social Network was very it was very uh, time-specific pop culture, whereas Batman and DC have been pop culture for 75-plus years. Yeah. And when everything so, else yeah. in the film is on point to the comics exactly... Yeah. Including Wonder Woman. Uh, oh, Wonder he, Woman, he, he, lit- he literally didn't give a fuck. I watched a video interview... Um, with him, and they were asking him about what he thought about what the critics were saying, and he's like, I haven't read what the critics were saying. I haven't even watched the movie, and I'm not going to watch the movie. He's uh, Christian Bale. No, Bale watched his own film. No, but Bale watched his own film and critiques himself quite hard. No, ba- Bale's hardcore in himself. No, oh, I'm thinking more of, like, when the... Uh, oh, do to do to do No, no, no. <laughs> team Cap or Team Iron. Oh, oh I got it. No, but that's because he's, he's like, I'm DC. <laughs> I'm Batman, what the fuck? Who, like, who is what this? are some questions as well? So you don't ask him, let me ask you something. Batman vs. Superman, who do you think is going to win, Christian? Batman. That's a question to ask a former Batman. Yeah. Not Captain Captain America or Iron Man. It's like, what? Why are you asking me this question? Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, what? I, I Plus, I, Christian Bale doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who watches Marvel films. No. no. He probably watched this. In fact, I guarantee he's watched this. I, I think I think, he's, I think his comic where he came out when I ain't mm. shit compared to Ben Affleck oh. is because he's seen it. Yeah. Mm. I reckon he's seen yeah. it and was like... There are so many scenes in this movie that are Batman as fuck. The fight scenes in this are incredible. Unreal. Are incredible. Um, I've seen... I have seen a lot of people complaining about uh, the body count, the Batman body count. Deal with it. What body count? He kills people in a dream, uh, he yeah, blows that's... up one guy when he shoots his fuel tank and lets him blow himself up and everybody else is in Sindri in that you're shooting at Batman, Batman shoots your car and he explodes. The actual body count that I counted off of Batman was eight. A maximum of eight yeah. at the most, and that's... It, he blows up three cars. Uh, one so car, one this, car falls on the other one. But it lands so. on the back. It lands yeah. like that, so they don't actually... Theoretically, yeah. you could survive that. So the body count I've taken are absolute confirmed kills. Three cars explode when they're shooting at the Batmobile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he throws one dude into a hallway with a grenade with another guy. Eight people at most. And all of them, like yeah. I say, are incidental to save himself. Mm-hmm. Or the person... That... Well, even even the, grenade, even the grenade one, he didn't throw the grenade. That no. dude pulled the pin. That wasn't Batman's fault. That's what, and that's what I'm saying. They're incidental. He's not... Yeah. I block, If I shoot the fuel tank on the car and it explodes, I haven't killed... Yes, I've killed you, but I haven't killed you. Yeah. A quarter so wall if I, shoot, this is if I shoot your fuel jetpack thing, and then you're dumb enough to pull the fucking trigger, I haven't killed you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I that's, disarmed that's right. you. This isn't, this isn't Michael Keaton driving into Ace Chemicals, dropping a heap of bombs and taking off. Michael Keaton strapped a bomb in that fat guy in Batman Returns. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, that dude had a fucking body count. Oh, yeah. And that, people that, are crapping yeah. on about this. Bale has a but... body count. Yeah. Yep. Bale, Bale takes people out in the dark night. He takes out criminals. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. See, I've got no problem with Batman really having a body count in general. I don't. But, I mean, what incidental are... bodies are just... incidental bodies. And this Batman, especially considering, like, you and uh, Brayden hit it on the head, he's lighter by the end, he won't be doing that sort of shit, yeah. but he's also going, no, these fuckers took somebody who has my mother's name, mm-hmm. they took this guy's mother from him. Yeah. No, and, and mm-hmm. I think that's what, Bat- when, when the fight ends, Batman realises this man's a man, but not only that, He's willing to die. He'll let me kill him as long as I save his mother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not a villain. That's why he does back up with that like. Yeah. What throws am I the doing? throws the spear away. Yeah. Uh, my, there, there was. I like of... the fact he cut him first. As I like feel pain. Yeah. Feel pain before you die. I want you to know pain. There is there is one line, and we'll get to the fight fight scene, which is probably my favorite fight scene of all time. Easy was the moment where uh, Batman did save Martha and said, I'm a was friend of your son's. Scene? Yeah. 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 Sorry, I'm ahead. a friend of your son's. It's actually probably the, the well, more, I, I more playful lines. Yeah, he, the he actually started to warm up throughout. So, yeah. Yeah, it's the Well, cape. I like the fact, too, that he was like, I will save your mother. Your Martha won't die tonight. Yeah. You have my... Wo-. I like the Superman. Like, the nod Superman gives him is a like, I know. Okay. I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that fight starts as well. Oh, so, sorry, it's... Before you get into yours, I like Batman and Superman's fight starts with Superman on literally on the like, <laughs> look, I, I, look, I fucked up, I fucked up, I admit that, but oh fuck. And the whole time he's like, can you 
please stop, stop, me. stop, stop trying to kill me and listen for five minutes, please. Just yeah. listen to me. I, I, I love the man. I love like the man. I walk out when you're rinsing now. I was just like, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah, you just stop and shut up and listen for a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's bad. But go, going into your so, story moment, the fight scene when this, he says Martha is like something out of the Arkham games. It's actually, yeah, Arkham games remind me hugely of our, our favourite hallway scene or the staircase scene in Daredevil 2, uh, Season 2 now. Yep. He looks he looks fucked yep. after yep. it as well. But it's just choreo- choreographed just beautifully. And he's mowing down dudes dude. and using his environment to beat his enemy. It's it's exactly what you'd expect from someone who was and trained like, by League of Legends. He, drops, he throws proper smoke. Yeah. And yeah. This sort of shit. Uh, somebody wait, Braden. Uh, let me ask you a question. <laughs> somebody we went to see this with made the following comment. Do they deserve to get punched in the face? General consensus. When Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman are fighting Doomsday, like, Superman's fighting Doomsday, and Wonder Woman's fighting Doomsday, and Batman's just, like, flipping around. It's like, yeah, because he's Batman. Yeah, but all he's doing is just, like, diving <laughs> out of the way of, like, getting hurt. Yeah, because yeah, he's, he's Batman. Because he, he's not, he doesn't want to fucking die. He's just a dude in a bat suit. Yeah, he's literally a dude in, who, <laughs> as strong as he is, yes. he's still a dude. Punchable? Right, who made that comment? I will punch Dr. him Bang. in the face. Dr. Bang did. Mate, Chris, he, he came with us. He was a little bit heartbroken. Well, he was sad, but he, he was, was a little bit... He, oh, well, hey, I think, I, there was a kid sitting behind me who deserves even more of a fucking punch in the face. For, did you for punch him? Yes! Go break! Yeah. Punch him in the face. It was the part where uh, Batman or Bruce Wayne was accessing all the files on Lex's drive and it came up with the Wonder Woman symbol, the Aquaman symbol, Cyborg. Uh, I think it had Flash. Superman, I can't remember. No, Cyborg, uh, Cyborg. And it had uh, Cyborg. Yeah. And he's sitting there and he's like, oh yeah, that's Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Captain America. <laughs> Did you turn around and give him the fuck look? I nearly did, but I wanted to pay attention to the fucking movie. I would have. I'm che- Get all out. You missed, all, all you missed was Ezra checking the dates on milk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to get... Wait, okay. Not... We walked out of this film, Braden. We, I walked out... Because I went, to, uh, see, I I went to see this. this with my brother, and I went to see this with the president. And we walk out of this film, and literally the first thing to come out of Adriana's mouth is, yo, fuck Ezra Miller and fuck his milk. <laughs> <laughs> the funny, the funny thing about that is, we walked out of this film, walked into our cars, and there was a bottle yeah, of milk, bottle of milk around. around. And I'm oh, just yeah. like, Ezra's travelled through time. <laughs> he was here. It's real. Oh, uh, it's still in date. It's all good. That um, but, yeah. One of my favourite is is your favourite fight scene from the movie as well mm-hmm. when he saved mm-hmm. Martha. Yeah. But that, that whole fight scene was amazing, but the thing that just makes me go, holy fuck, you're Batman. Oh, there was two points. Is when he, he, he punched someone in his face, he punched them so hard <laughs> that they flipped and they face palmed the yeah, floor. Yeah. yeah. And I then, like the dude that he grapple hooked in, grabbed the face of him and threw him into the floor. That was a good <laughs> one as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the, the next one was when he I turned ran, into the wall. Ran, no. <laughs> That that into a, the wall yeah, was like, the side fuck was you! <laughs> no, my favourite, my favourite one, my favourite takedown in that scene was when he was running towards the crate and he literally grabs the guy's face and backwards knocks the guy's face oh, on as the he box over the crate. as he fl- flips over the crate. Then he grapples the crate and fl- flings Flip it over his face. <laughs> flings it over the next guy's face. It was just like... Oh, yeah. And that, that was Daddy, basically... Batman that was, Ripped out of Arkham City and Arkham Asylum oh, that yeah, fight scene. It was choreographed beautifully. It's well done. The whole, the whole. <laughs> that 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 was my favorite man versus Batman scene. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the whole the whole film is just the fact that he when he throws down that fucking thing, he picks him up like he's basically cracking his fucking neck. Yeah. yeah. He's got him in a neck hole. Just like, like... He's just just choking the bitch. Just like see ya. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he is hard. Like, he jumps on him through that great plating mm. at one point. And yeah. Batman is hard and, fucking and, core. Yeah, and it's brutal. The foot on the throat yeah. and the spear as well. Yeah, when he's telling, he's Just basically like... saying, yeah, you're gone. Yeah, you're done. You're done. It's a very brutal Batman, and it's a very honest Batman about what he is as well, since he just came out of retirement. He's very honest about what he is. Did he just come out of retirement? I don't know. That that's something. Else. My brother described yeah. this film as really good at, at answering questions. It never actually gave you the chance to ask. Mm. 
Mm. Because yeah. has he come out of retirement? I don't know. I th- I'm pretty sure he has, but the film doesn't actually ever tell you. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, how, I don't think he, he, was information. he was working. He was working on a um. He was working on the um. Night moves. The people smuggling thing. Sorry. What? He's working on the people smuggling thing. Yeah. I, I oh, guess white, that's true. white Portuguese. No, but that's because he yeah. was hunting yeah. down. Yeah. He was hunting down the ship that had kryptonite. That had to do with Superman still. Yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah, is, but before that, he didn't no, know that no. had anything to do with Superman. Yeah, no, those, those people, people he go to save is because he's looking for information on the white Portuguese, Portuguese. the ship. He's looking yeah. for that rock to stop Superman right from what from yeah, the mo- from the start of the film where he sees that shit that happens at Wayne Tower. He's his only mission is to stop Superman. But before this film begins, he's meant to be retired. That's what they haven't told you is before this begins, he's meant to have quit. Richard he's meant to have been a long make more quit. sense because he's uh, yeah, no, no, so, yeah, the, the way the way I took it is he thought the white Portuguese was a man and he was a people yep. smuggler yep. and then it turned out that the white Portuguese was actually a but ship the, smuggling. No, he, if you listen at the beginning, out, at the beginning, uh, what he says he went, is I'm gonna use at the beginning when he's talking to Alfred, right? So at the beginning you have Metropolis is destroyed and he's all shitty. Next thing he's in the cave and he's talking to Alfred and Alfred's like you. What are you looking for? He's like, I'm looking for the white Portuguese because he's bringing a dirty bomb to that's Gotham. Right. And that's why later on, when he says it's a ship, Alfred says, that's all well and good, but you've never been good at lying to me, and I know it's not a dirty bomb. What is it you're really after? Yep. And he says, I want the rock. Uh, yep. So yep. since, that's why I'm saying, since the start, all he's known is at the beginning, the white Portuguese has kryptonite. So his entire purpose for finding the white Portuguese is to obtain kryptonite, before yeah. Lex Luthor. Oh, yeah, he doesn't know is... Lex Luthor is the one getting it. He just knows somebody's getting it from the white Portuguese he wants it first. Because what you see is, uh, before he's going into the, into the cave looking for the white Portuguese, you actually see them pull the rock out of the Indian Ocean. Exactly. Yeah, yeah Exactly. He, the whole His whole purpose, for, he, that's what I'm saying, like, right at the beginning where he's talking to Jack on the phone, he's meant to have been retired by that point for another That's why he actually looks smaller. This is meant to be Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um... It, it, oh, yeah. it does yeah, make it more sense because it, it it looks like he's actually trying to be the more CEO, more CEO. Yeah, which is why he spends a lot of time in the office and he's got a lot of people in the office and he's which is also why he's business not, suit. Yeah, I was going to say also why he doesn't bring a bat suit with him because it would also make sense. Alfred technically is building a suit. Think about that. Yeah. He's building him a suit and he says at one point, "I will need the suit by whatever point." I think it's about 30 minutes in the film. He's like, Alfred, I'll need the suit by this point. And he goes, oh, and he goes no, so Bruce Wayne got this information. Really Bruce Wayne will be the one. It's when he's going to Lex's party. Yeah. He says, I'll need the suit. And Alfred says, no, Bruce Wayne got this information. Bruce Wayne's been invited mm. because he's working on a suit because he doesn't have one because he's ripped it all apart. The man yeah. is bur- All that shit must be in this director's cut of like the man are being fucked up and him not mm-hmm. being Batman and, and all that sort of shit. Because mm. when he looks at the suit, he, he's looking at that. For me, what I took that away from is hello, old friend. Well, the line I actually thought in my head was, you're not done with me, you'll never be done with me. Which is Mm. Robo-Bat. Yeah. Um, Those playing at home is the Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. But yeah, that's the the line that popped into my head was, you're not done with me, you'll never be done with me. And that's true. The the Batman will never be done with its host, essentially. And it also makes sense, like, the other thing that feels like it's missing from this is a scene where somebody turns on the bat signal. Mm. For Superman to turn up and say, the next time they put on your bat signal, don't. Next time they shine your light in the sky, don't come. Mm. Yeah. Because they haven't. Yeah. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. It doesn't make. Well, any yes, sense. yes, no. I mean, he'd been Batman for twenty odd years. I'm sure the bat signal was no secret. Yeah, but he's been he's been retired for two or three. Not oh, easy. Minimum. This Batman's meant to be forty five. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's been retired for a while. He makes that comment to Alfred, in all the time I've been Batman, how many good people did we see fall and how many stayed good? Mm. Yeah. Like, he, he, he's seen a lot of shit. I think he's... I so, honestly do think he's meant to be done by this point. It, it reminds me uh, of a line... Um... And he comes out of retirement because he's seen a god. Because the world is introduced to Superman. There is no need for Batman because he's, there's no need... There's no big fucking thing for that dude. Mm-hmm. Then you see this alien yeah. ripping your city apart and destroying your building and taking away, making an orphan of a kid. Mm. As you're looking up at this building going, you just yeah. you just did to this kid what somebody did to me. Mm. I'm fucking ending you. I'm, I'm, get yeah, the boot, I'm taking, putting the boots back on. Yeah. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah. 
Mm. As I say, um, I'm, I've got the luxury of having seen it twice now to be able to look at the little more nuances in it because Jeremy Irons' performance is a lot more. He's a, If you take this alpha from the aspect of this guy's been retired and been in France like he wanted mm. and now he's come back in this thing, he, that's why he's constantly like, are you fucking kidding me? We have to go through this yeah. shit again. Um, the, the Going back to the line of you'll never be done with Batman and yeah, yeah, back yeah. to the Chris, is not, Chris Nolan's mm-hmm. Dark Knight. Yep. Mm. Not literally just the Dark Knight where... Um, Batman says to Jim Gordon, you either die a hero or see yourself become the villain. Yeah. 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 And that's, I think what's happened here is you're, you're actually going From full Batman. circle because this Batman has been Batman for so long, he's become the villain because yeah. he's cruel. That's yeah. what yeah. that's what Superman's whole point is. You're fucking cruel. You're yeah. branding people. It's getting them killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that that's that. I think Superman's entire point is Batman has a body count through incidental kills. Like you brand a guy and in prison they kill him. Yep. Yeah. Stop being cruel. Stop trying to be like that. Yeah. And by the end, Batman isn't. Yeah. Yeah. He he is that different he guy. Comes, that's why he punches comes the wall. Back to... Yeah. He yeah. comes back to being a hero. Yeah. Because he died. Batman died. Yeah. And was reborn. So you you are, you you live all. If you look at the, the history of every hero, yeah, you live long enough to see yourself become a villain, and you fall and you metaphorically die. Mm. So you rise again yeah. as an even better hero. Yeah. Mm. Look at Superman. Superman since the the post death and return of Superman made that character a much more mm-hmm. fulfilling, realistic character because from that point on he could die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a better character. Yeah. And he took yeah. him dying to get that. Yeah. And it took us getting these, because everybody for so long was like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we had a Superman who was just dark and gritty and psychotic? And then we got four of them, and it's like, wow, this is not... Yeah. Wow, yeah. this yeah. is hard to read. Yeah, this is hard I really to don't want to play this game anymore. And then when he comes back, and he wipes them all out, and then it's just like, I'm back, and I'm yeah. Superman, and he does the right thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, yeah, you need this. Yeah. yeah, and I think yeah. that's what we're going to see as well. Is Batman is going to try to be <clears throat> Superman in this universe now and try to be the the beacon for good, as it were. But you can't have that that bolstering force is mm. Superman. Yeah. And yeah. so when he comes back, the game changes because now you have the hero. Yeah, you have the absolute a right. And mm. now we'll get what I love in my comic books, which is passive aggressive bromance Batman vs Superman <laughs> yeah. which is the fucking best things ever you, written you, you, you know you're walking in a trap <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna save you if you do I won't call you <laughs> thanks for thanks for helping me save Lois Bruce I couldn't have done it without you I'm aware <laughs> I love it so I love that guy so much yeah um how do we feel about Doomsday preserving jo- well, Doomsday apparently is darker in the, the next mm-hmm. one uh, sorry, the, the uncut, uncut version. Um, but I don't mind it because mm-hmm. he can be a one-shot villain because he actually achieved the one fucking mm-hmm. thing he's supposed to do. Yep. He killed him. Yep, that's the one that's, I that's agree All you need Doomsday for good is to kill him. See, that's the thing. I mean, I saw these And he brought the others together by taking him because at the end, those, like, one yeah. one of Batman are literally, like, those, they're, they're those two hard. are fucking... Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're... They, there is, she has Batman's respect to, like, the core now. Yeah, absolutely. Which so, says something, because that, that Batman respects nobody. Yeah, yeah, grumpy Batman doesn't like no one. Um, but the one yep. thing I was hoping to see from Doomsday, because I kept seeing on, actually it was on one of our previous podcasts, someone said, oh, not Doomsday, Battletoad. Yeah. See, I was looking for, like, the whole, you know, once you kill him, he evolves, and then you kill him again, and he evolves again, like, so you can't I, kill him twice. I, I like, the, I like the idea of that because of the fact that you can't, you, we're never going to be able to get proper Doomsday from the no, comics. No, absolutely not. We, you need to be aware, the comic, the, the movie reality will always be different to the comic reality. Mm. You have to accept that in the same way a 300-page book, yeah. or sorry, a 3,000-page book into a two-hour film... Doesn't work. ...is going to be a different... It's going to be the bulk of it. The Harry Potter films, mm. for instance, are a good example. Mm-hmm. They're the Harry Potter films with all the points you need to hit from those films, mm-hmm. but the book is so much better. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um... And I'll get into another Harry Potter analogy in a few minutes, but um, but yeah, it, it's 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 uh, fuck, I totally lost my train of thought there. Uh, Doomsday evolving. Yeah. So, different... so so because this is a film universe, mm. this is the worst threat on the planet, or the, yeah. the worst threat ever we've ever we've ever mm-hmm. seen, at least Superman's ever faced. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the fact that he was literally just 
that that mm. getting more and more powerful and doing that sort of shit and having these these, these crazy sort of electricity shit each time yeah. it grew. Yeah. I didn't mind that because it's yeah. movie universe Doomsday. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree that, completely. And like I say, he fucking took out Superman. Yeah, which yeah. Yeah, one job, you did it. Yeah. But Even when you die, you fucking did it. Yeah, and the fact that they portrayed it so yeah. well by the fact that he just kept coming back and nothing was stopping him. Yeah, absolutely. Until Superman put that kryptonite in him with Although the, 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 the one Batman. problem I do have, the one problem I do have is we blew it up with a nuke, sir. It's completely indestructible. Nothing can stop it. I'm Wonder Woman. Look at me. Stop it. How did that happen? Don't yeah. ask questions. Don't one of my favourite questions. things about Doomsday was Wonder Woman kicking ass. Oh, I agree, no, right. but I know it's because he's Kryptonian and magic hurts Kryptonians and she has a magic sword. But if you don't know that, you sit yeah. there going, yeah. you just told me he's if, indestructible, if, now she can if, cut through his sword with a bronze, with that, so cut through his legs with a bronze sword and cut his hand off, okay. If they said, we have nothing man-made that can destroy him, that would make sense. because None of our conventional means, sir. Yeah. Because, think about it, what's the biggest thing that humans have as a weapon? A nuke. A nuke. Mm-hmm. That's it. That is it. That is the ultimate game ender that yeah. we have as human beings. Yep. Mm. Wonder Woman looks human, but she's no. She's, she's not. not. Superman is is looks human, but he's not. But they Batman's human. That's he why he dived he's under amazing. that. That's why he dived under that piece of metal. You know, yeah. She went yeah. down. He's like, fuck this shit. Yeah. yeah. Stop up um, and roll, bitches. <laughs> um, but that's that's what I'm saying. If they said we have nothing. Man made that can stop yeah, this. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, that would that would have made it a bit better. Uh, like it would have made it tighter because then you're like, fuck, we have to rely on Superman and Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman to take them the fuck down. It'd be yeah. Wonder Woman and Aquaman. Wonder Woman mainly. I got, have we got to see the lesser of truth I as actually, well? I actually, I actually, yeah. you're right, Terry. I do have to eat a bit of crow on this because um, <laughs> I was afraid that I still think she needs bulk up a little bit more. Mm. But I was afraid that she was going to look like a stick. And there is a point where she busts out the lasso of truth, which once again, I'm going to, hang on, I'll get into that in a sec. She busts out the lasso of truth and she's pulling back on it and she's got the proper thighs. Oh, yeah. So I was impressed with that. Um, what I liked about the lasso of truth is one example. Mm. This film, if you don't know comic books, oh, mm. you're lost. Yep. Yeah, they're, no not, they're not fucking... She oh. didn't whip it out and she didn't go, this is my lasso of truth. It's unbreakable, Batman. Quick, get him now. Yeah, it's all of a sudden it's around it's the, yeah, game, so it's not, like, oh, cool. She's got and, the fucking... And the thing is, Wonder Woman being a part of the Trinity and being probably one of the most biggest feminist icons from the comic world. Yeah. Actual feminist. The... The, oh, yeah, no, the, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Everyone knows what the lasso of truth is. I didn't know about the sword and the shield. That's kind of new to me. Well, the shield is anyway. But, um... But yeah, the lasso comes out and it's, and it's bright gold as well and it was fantastic. Glowing. It was fan- it's glowing like it's meant to. Yeah, it was a fantastic contrast to like the gritty look of the film, uh, the contrast to Doomsday. It stood out. So everyone went, ah, that's what it is. I also like the... But, I'm sorry, just to interject. Yeah. We know that. But like, say for instance, and I'm sure Ethan is more aware, but kids mm. around Ethan's age, right? Yeah. How, how old's Ethan? Uh, 10, 11? Okay, 10, 11. Mm. You think most 10, 11 years know? No, probably not. And that's my point is, but it doesn't... A, Mar- a Marvel film, that would happen and fucking Stanley would come and be like, that's her lasso of truth that she uses yeah. to... You know what I mean? Yeah. Something like yeah. that would happen. Or Nick Fury, Nick Fury would be there and be like, damn, she's using that lasso... Sorry, Hello Cool J would show and be like, damn, she's using that lasso of truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because this film, it's just like, no, she uses it. Yeah. This is, just accept it. Is a it. tool of the trade. If you want questions, go buy a comic. Yeah, I think... Adam, which is good. We had the, all, all three of us had this conversation afterwards. Was that it wasn't? <coughs> it's not an, it, it wasn't an origins movie in the fact that it didn't have to spell out every single step of the way mm-hmm. who people are and what they've got mm-hmm. and what weapons they've got and yeah. mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, because people like us is, know. We know this shit. That's right, because they're... they're, they're and that's what was written for. Yeah, that, that, that's right, because this is what they're targeting. They're targeting the older adult audience that has yep, been... 22 hours. Hours. I, I think, I actually think, and it's, it just hurts me to say it as anybody who knows my opinions on Warner Brothers over the last, like, ten years. Yeah. I actually think, and this is where this analogy is going to get more explained, I think they learned from Harry Potter. Absolutely. Because in Harry Potter they had a franchise that they tried to start off kid-friendly made it darker and made more money the more they made it like what the fans were asking yeah. for. And I think they've learned and gone, wait a minute, if we just give them yeah. exactly what they're asking for and exactly it's in, we'll make money. Yeah, it's inver- an adult, yeah. it's an adult thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, this is an adult, these are adult comic movies where Marvel Absolutely. are family ones. Mm-hmm. And that's brilliant. They've captured a different market. But the other thing that they're doing really well um, 
as I stop Matt from making noise because he's throwing me off. Uh, the other the other thing that they're doing really well is, and what critics aren't getting, what I think casual fans aren't getting, mm-hmm. this isn't a standalone film. This is Harry Potter two. Now, if you haven't seen Harry Potter one. Harry Potter 2 doesn't make as much sense to you. And if you didn't know Harry Potter 3 was coming, you'd get to the end of it and be like, but he still isn't be Voldemort. This is shit. Yeah. yeah. See, I mean, the thing, funny thing is, what I, I agree with the Harry Potter thing, as as they started off, they went, right, this is where we're starting. And as the fans have gotten older, the content has gotten older as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas people at DC and Snyder are like, said, look, this guy's been around for 75 years. Superman's been around for, I don't know how long, probably a couple of years after Batman. You know, the, the fans, the people know, it's almost ingrained in our society. It's almost yep. a learned behavior. Like, you pick up, oh, you're either a Superman or a Batman, like a Captain America. Yep. Or, and so they go, we can just jump straight in, both feet into the deep end. Let's take yep. a track of it. And it's worked out brilliantly. I mean, in another prime example of making an adult film mm. for adult mm-hmm. target audience in the comic mm. book world is Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. Yep. What was it? Three three hundred sixteen billion yeah. or something stupid? It's something ridiculous. Like yeah, they, it's they, just like, mm-hmm. of course they're gonna, of course it's gonna make money and people are gonna understand it, it will. because they know the origin. Exactly. Yeah. The, the unfortunate thing about this movie is because it's been shit canned for the first what? It's been over for three days. What annoys me about it is that the first week's takings, they'll go, oh, we made a little bit of money. And then people like us will go tell their friends saying, don't listen to that. It's shit. Oh, it will go, just go and watch it. It will just blow up. I reckon up. The, the, the reason they're releasing the DVD early as well is because it's going to exp- No, they're not worried. Oh. They know if they snap at the right time and go, okay, what you saw in there, mm-hmm. see the bloodier version. Yeah. See the... We- I see the real version. version, like the hardcore version. Mm. Oh, I'll pay for that. No, absolutely. And it's a much, yeah. much smarter to do that in three months' time. Whereas Deadpool, you give it twelve months, people get so nostalgic for it that they'll go, "Fuck, I'll pay for that immediately." Yeah, absolutely. Because I love that film. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? And the There's no is, need yeah. to put it out right now because the demand will always be there. Absolutely. Um, what I, why I think this is getting such shit can reviews, is because the world has changed very heavily in the post Marvel film world. Because mm. this was Star Trek Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you really look at it, yeah. this was Star Trek 2, mm. where Spock dies and ends with the, the slight moment of the casket and things helping, and 3, the entire film was about getting Spock, Spock back. back. That's what JLA will be. You know, Somehow we need to bring Superman back, it's, or it's the he's come back and Superman. he's lost himself. Or, yeah, it's the death and return of Superman, yeah. and you can't have the return without the death. But as I said, this is part 2 of a 10-part minimum yeah. Yeah. series. And, and you, you won't be able to have that effect if you have the Hollywood drowning where they die for a minute and then come back hmm. at yeah. the end of the film. Yeah, exactly. pretty much. Even the the, the the drowning in this, to me, felt a bit more realistic because as opposed to being, like, normally they, they're gone for, like, 15 minutes in the water. Yeah. And they, Lois, right. he yanked out within, like, I know I know it's not as realistic, I'm, you know, I, I'm, yeah, still yeah. I'm just pre- yeah. preempting no, that I can great. feel the Sorry. Matt Rage coming. <laughs> No, wait, no, no, you know, no, no, no. Wait, wait, he pulls, you know, she, he pulls her out within two, which in film, within two seconds, you, you're still alive in film yeah. world. So in that, I don't mind she coughs it back up. In the same way, Superman being drowned and her pulling her out, and then the minute she throws the kryptonite away, he comes back. Makes yeah. perfect sense yeah. to me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It yeah. also goes on to kind of show you can't actually kill him, so he's not dead. But the problem is reviewers don't like it because they liked reviewers like to be able to put a spoiler in in their review so people. You know, like it's we, we live, yeah, clickbait. And we live in a world where yeah. spoilers might make people see a film, but you can't spoil this film because you literally ruin the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that's why they're pissed off because they're like, "Are you making me write a review where I have to like write something more than just Superman dies?" Fuck you. Yeah, um, I have to be creative with my writing. Uh, you can't Fuck. tell. You can't tell who wins in, at the end uh, out of a that was the versus big, yeah. movie. Yeah, this, um, yeah. But also, yeah. nobody wins. That's nobody what's the wins. point That's of the movie. If heroes fight, nobody wins. Yep. That's the point of the movie. Yeah. Yep. That nobody gets subtext because they're fucking Americans. <laughs> unless you spell it out and be like, that's her lasso of truth. They don't that, get it. That, that, that's why they're so pissed off because there is no... Yeah. Batman is the ultimate winner. Superman is the ultimate winner. There's no... Those two fight. Yeah. But there is no conflict resolution between them. The resolution the is... Yeah, the resolution is Batman realises at the end, it's like, I was fight. wrong. Yeah. Mm. Which for him is the hardest but thing to me. at the same time, um, Superman did that as well when he was coming to Batman. Yeah, absolutely. Was like, like, yeah. He, wasn't, he wasn't there to kill Batman. He was going to ask him for help. I like the fact Batman said as well, I let him down. Yeah. Um, mm, I let him down in life. I'm not letting him down in death. That is... Because yeah. that, that kind of reminds me... 
what's the scene? Oh, it's a. Oh, it's not canon. Sorry, I don't know. I won't even bring it up. The, the 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 canon moment that that reminded me of. Maybe this is what you're thinking of. Is in the the death and return of Superman when they do the first issue of Funeral for a Friend, which is the mm. the multi part where they bury Superman. Mm-hmm. Superman does get the honor procession, mm-hmm. but he's obviously his body is there. They don't do the different burial like they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's getting the honor procession, and um, a suicide bomb with a vest actually turns up to set it off and blow mm. up the thing. And like as he's as he's undoing his vest and getting ready to go, you just the back panel you see something dropping behind him. Yeah. And the next thing is him swinging um on the rooftop and just <laughs> Batman's hand grabbing him, pulls him in, and he just says, "You're lucky. Yeah. You're lucky. I'm here for a funeral for my friend, and I'm gonna follow his example, or else I drop you to the pavement right now." Yeah. 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 And it's just this reel of like, you know, I. And you can like, yeah. Batman throughout this entire comic is just constantly like. I, f- I let him. If I had been here, I could have saved him. And everybody's constantly yeah. like, "Are you mental? Yeah. Doomsday would have eaten you." And he's <laughs> like, "If I had been there, I could have, I could have stopped this. Yeah. I could have saved him." Mm. So, anyway, Braden, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap this up? No, no. I was, look, <laughs> good. it was a good film. No, no doubt it had its flaws, but I do agree. I think that's going to be fixed with the director's cut. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Are there you guys any last thoughts? Don't pay attention to reviewers. Go, just go spend the money. Go see it yourself. Yeah. Reviewers, just go see it. Go stuff yourself with your stupid reviews and your yeah. low credits that you're giving this film because you don't know the original content. Okay. Now I'm just going to interject it, here. So, sorry, sorry, Brent. We will come back right, and do just, a it, proper episode when the when the Blu-ray comes out, mm-hmm. the Ultimate Cut comes out. We will do that. Yep. We will do a proper one where we sit and do that. But for now, let's give Matt Airway and compare them when the time comes. Mm-hmm. Do you have a Barbara? Mine goes to Jesse Eisenberg. Yep. Yeah. Straight out, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. The actor for just a shit job. Well, he doesn't play a character. He only plays Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. And as Brayden <clears> and I established earlier this week, Jesse Eisenberg is only good when he's counterbalanced by Woody Harrelson. Yeah. That you need Woody yeah. Harrelson to counterbalance. In fact, Woody Harrelson is Lex Luthor. Oh wow! All the same sort of Woody natural Harrelson born from... killers. Oh, oh so I was going to go with uh, yeah. True Detective. Well, imagine I'm talking. Imagine like the the look from natural oh, born yes, killers absolutely. with that True Detective intensity. Oh god, that's scary. Special Lex Luthor. That's fucking scary. So okay, so Sorry. Barbara's all around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ima- with a little... Because imagine that part where he threatens the senator as, like, Tallahassee from Zombieland, where he, you know... Oh, even oh. with a southern accent, that would be it, but, well, especially, when he, especially when he did the, the red capes are coming. Yeah. That sort of a thing. Right at the end, when he's talking to Batman through the bar... Or yelling at Batman through the bars. Yeah, about the, the ding-dong. Holy fuck, just having him doing that. Yep. Okay, so who yeah. are you giving your Cranston to? Oh... Ben Affleck, yeah. Batman, with an honourable mention to Gal Gadot because literally didn't didn't really have a whole lot of interest in seeing the Wonder Woman movie. Would have seen it, didn't have a whole lot of interest. Really fucking pumped for that movie. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I'm and that says yeah. because as you said, I need humble behind that because I was not a fan. Yeah, I like her performance as Diana Prince is fantastic. Well, she's great. She's gorgeous. Perfect. She's just in every aspect of the work. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to go with Ben Affleck. Uh, with an honourable mention to Gal Gadot, as well as uh, Henry Cavill, because I still love him as. Man He's a gorgeous so. man. Henry Cavill, I, I, it's I don't know if it's because the other two are so good, but Henry Cavill just feels like no, they're the very big part. They're very big. There's there's some very big footsteps to sort of. Yeah, he, he feels like that. the he Superman feels like the worst part of this film, which is weird because Superman should be the biggest. Like yeah. the, I don't know in terms of size, like, but in just terms no, of presence. Presence. And no, I Chris agree. Reeve would have outshone everybody, for instance. Well, you got to remember, like the the Superman lineage is there's a lot. Chris Reeve. Oh, I know, but but I'm just then, saying, Christopher. Like you put Christopher Reeve in there, and he would have been on par with Ben Affleck. Oh, absolutely. But Henry Cavill just feels like he's like he's, hang, he's hanging out with the cool kids. Yeah. But he's technically doing like he's he's in the IT club. Yeah, he's doing a he's doing like AP chem. Yeah, and going yes, I smoked the marijuanas. I did yeah. three Weedles yesterday. Oh, I have you all know, the THCs. My oh, parents. I, 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 I was, I was <laughs> all yeah. right, thumbs up, thumbs down. Brayden, for Cranston. Oh, sorry, Brayden Cranston. Oh, I'm I'm straight on the uh, Dan Drake and Gal Gadot yeah. train with that straight on. Mm. All right, oh, so thumbs much. up, thumbs down. Um, all my thumbs up. So five thumbs. I, I I need to borrow yours. Can I borrow yours and then you borrow from Matt? Yeah, this is getting all my thumbs. Okay. Up. 
Take out uh, Jesse. Take out Jesse. Give the score. You know. I, I wish we could take out Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse paint your picture and fuck off, mate. <laughs> I know a guy who'll do it for yeah. five grand. Five. I'll, find, I'll crowdsource, man. I'm sure we can. <laughs> five up without Jesse. And with? Four. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm giving it four, no. personally. But well, just I like loved I said, every I part of that this movie twice. other than Jesse. After having watched this twice, on second watching, it's not as enjoyable, and I mean that just because it's still good. It's, it's, it's a good film. It is a good film. But on second watch, it's not as enjoyable because you know where you're going. But with that said... It is a better film on second view because you know where you're going. Yeah. So you sit there and you watch it and you're like, man, like literally, here's what I take away watching this the second time. If these two, and I took it from every fucking comic book they've done this in as well, which means Snyder nailed something. If these two had shut the fuck up and listened to each other from step one, none of this would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brayden, how many thumbs are you giving it? Yeah. Yeah, four up. Four up? You give me the director's cut and recast. Yeah, uh, we'll wait like, and see what happens. And I'll just cut. Maybe there's everything. maybe there's more explained. <laughs> the director's cut. They got yeah. Brian Cranston. Yeah, no, Cranston or Woody Harrelson. Just, Woody Harrelson's CGI. Yeah. 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 Or even Simon Pegg. I'd be a good cut. Nah. No. No. I'm just saying. I'd, just, I'd be a good. I well, Jesse I guess Simon Pegg bit and just Simon Pegg. Yeah, yeah. This is like look at what we got. What look what we're given here. Yeah. Maybe that they'll CGI boy whatever they're told. Yeah, that's true. A bald pit boy. Give him bars from Gotham. Yeah, that could work. Alright, well, so final notes. Watch Batman vs. Superman. Watch it. It is worth oh. it, I promise you. Don't watch it if you, you don't kids. If you don't enjoy it, it wasn't written for you. Actually, Brayden, here's a question for you. You have young kids. Would you let them watch this? Or would you want them to be a certain yeah, age first? You watch them with... You no, I'd let them, I'd let them watch this. Okay. No, well, for example, who do we take today? <laughs> I'm just fucking. Thank you. I'm just fucking. Thank you. But Ethan is older. It's like 11. Then 5 and 8. How's it, how old's the armadillo on Jay? Jordan? Uh, six, 6 and 5. 6 and 5. Six and oh, five. really? They're younger than I thought. Yeah, so no. <laughs> anyway. Younger than I thought. <laughs> like, well, then again, we don't know. Like, they live with Brayden, so they've seen some. They um, live in Moe. They've seen some shit. They live in Moe. They've seen real death. <laughs> <laughs> they're out. They're uh, out I mean, the road. They were two minutes on the road stabbing there's someone. Ba- in there was a baby selling crack on their street corner this morning. <laughs> <from> Brayden <Brad, so. laughs> was stabbing that dude in the background. Yeah, they were in the car. They were giving the arm. Look at giving him the arm knife for Ruth. What are you talking about? They gave him that knife for Father's Day. <laughs> That's not a knife. <laughs> All right. So. I have been your host, Red Thunder Adam Gerard, and joining me in this review of Batman vs Superman have been the Honey Badger Terry O'Neill. I'm Badger. The Dad Knight Brandon Hearn. Goodbye. And the Probe Matt Richards. Adios. And we'll see you all next time. And if you watch this to the end and you complain, we did warn you, this episode did contain many, Spoil- many spoilers. You're so close. Spoilers. So close. Love the enthusiasm there, Dad Knight. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, Guardians for me was, I mean, it was popcorn. Good, but... Spoilers! Spoilers. This has been a Cabana production.